Okay, so welcome back. This week we're going to talk about the hidden subgroup problem. So in previous lectures, we've already seen the algorithm, the quantum algorithm for Simon's problem, and the algorithm for the simple version of the period finding problem. And both of these used essentially exactly the same quantum algorithm. Namely, first we created the uniform superposition, then we queried the function, and then we did a Fourier transform over the appropriate group. So in Simon's problem, that was z2 to the n. And in the period finding problem, that was the group of integers modulo n. And the only place where these algorithms really differed was after the quantum part in the classical post-processing. Okay, so the quantum part was essentially exactly the same. Uh, just that, you know, we used uh, the f appropriate Fourier transform for the group that we're working over. Okay, so here, today we're going to see that actually both of these problems, Simon's problem and the period finding problem, are a common instance of a more general problem called the hidden subgroup problem. Okay, so let's develop this commonality. Okay, so in Simon's problem, we had a function from z2 to the n to some uh, range, and we had the promise that there was an s such that f of x equals f of y, if and only if x minus y is in is either 0 to the n or s. Okay? Um, so, you know, originally we, we wrote this as, you know, x, x plus y. Okay, this is like um, this uh, bitwise xor here. Um, but over z2 to the n, um, you know, an element is its own inverse. Okay, so, you know, writing this as x plus y or x plus the inverse of y, that's essentially, that's the same thing, okay, because uh, over z2 to the n, an element is its own inverse. I just write it this way, x minus y, so as to be more uniform with how we can formulate the simple period finding problem. Okay, so in the simple period finding problem, we have a function from the integers modulo n to some range. And there the promise is that there's an s such that f of x equals f of y, if and only if x minus y is equal to zero modulo s. Okay, so to identify the commonality in these two problems, we need to use some group theory. Okay, so let me give the basic definitions here. So a group is just a set together with an operation um, here, I'll you know just want to talk about a generic operation, so I'll just call it uh, circle. Okay, so um, the operation is a is a mapping that takes pairs of elements from G to G, and it should satisfy the following three conditions. So it should be associative. So x circle y. If you do this first and then circle the result with z, that should be the same as first taking the circle of y and z, and then circling that result with, with x. Uh, there should be an identity element, e. Okay, so e circle x is equal to x, and also x circle e is equal to x. And every element should have an inverse. Okay, so in, uh, for every x, there should be a y, such that x circle y is equal to the, the identity element, and also y circle x is equal to the identity element. Okay, so that's the definition of a group. Uh, we're also going to need the notion of a subgroup. Okay, so a subgroup of a group is just a subset of the group that is also a group, okay? But since you know that, um, that H is a subset of a group, then you don't have to verify all the conditions again. For example, like you already know that, that the operation is going to be associative on H. Okay, so um, to check that something is a subgroup, you only need to check three things. And that's closure, that for all x and y in H, the circle of x and y is again in H, and um, that the identity element is in H, and that H is closed under taking inverses. Okay? Okay, good. So now we can tease out the commonality in Simon's problem and uh, the period finding problem. Okay, so let's start with the period finding problem. 
So, um, so Zn, of course, is a group under addition modulo n. The identity element is just zero. And if S divides n, and we look at this uh, subset of Zn here, consisting of the elements of 0, s, 2s, up to n minus s. So these are, this is, you know, alternative way to write this is this is just the set of x such that uh, x mod s equals 0, the set of x and zn such that x mod s is equal to 0. Uh, so this is a this is a subgroup of Zn, okay? So you can see that it is uh, closed under addition, right? If you take two things that are equal to zero modulo s and you add them, the result will still be zero modulo s. Uh, it's closed under taking inverses as well, and the identity element is in H, right? So uh, zero is in H. Okay, and we know that in the simple period finding problem, uh, f, by, by the promise of the simple period finding problem, f is going to be constant on h, right? So uh, remember that we know that uh, f of x is equal to f of x plus s, where we're promised that that's the case. Um, so f is going to be constant on this set of things that are equal to zero modulo s. Okay, so where else is f constant? Or where else are we promised that f is going to be constant in the simple period finding problem? Well, it's also constant on the set of things which are equal to one modulo s, okay? Now you see that we can write this set, it's like a shift of h, right? We can write this set as uh, the set of elements that are of the form 1 plus h, 1 plus little h, where h is in this, this subgroup. Okay, so it's basically like shifting all the elements of capital H by 1. Now, this set itself is not going to be a subgroup, right? For example, it doesn't contain the identity element. It doesn't contain 0, right? 0 is not going to be 1 modulo s. Okay, but although it's not itself a subgroup, it is a shift of a subgroup, right? It's basically this subgroup capital H just translated, shifted by adding one, okay? And, you know, this notion is studied in group theory. Uh, this is what's called a coset, okay? So um, H1 is a coset of capital H. So what is a coset in general? So if we have a group G and a subgroup H, so every uh, element, little g, of the group can define a left coset of H by considering this set here. So it's basically you look at every little h in capital H, and you look at the circle product on the left by g, okay? And you look at the set generated in this way, and this is a left coset of H. So now if we look at the coset generated by little g and some other element, uh, little g prime, then you can show that those cosets are either going to be identical or disjoint, okay? So in this way, distinct cosets form a partition of the group g, okay? So here we were doing the operation on the left. Uh, you could also define a right coset by doing the operation on the right. So looking at the things of the form H circle G. Uh, and, but when we're just talking about abelian groups, I'm just going to call them cosets. Uh, so I won't specify left or right. Okay, so um, in the case of Zn, we have these uh, N cosets. Of, of capital H, right? So again, capital H was our subgroup. It was the things equal to um, zero modulo S, and then the, the shifts of H, so the cosets of H are, you know, the things, the set of things equal to one modulo S, the set of things equal to two modulo S, set of things equal to three modulo S, et cetera. Okay, and so we can see that these cosets partition Zn.
Okay, and we can state the promise on the function f in terms of the cosets. So the promise is exactly saying that f is constant on cosets of h, and distinct cosets take on distinct values under f. Okay, so that's just an equivalent way of stating the promise in the case of the simple period finding problem. And also our goal in the simple period finding problem is uh, to learn S. And you see that that S you know, generates this subgroup H. So once we know S, we know the subgroup. And of course, if we know the subgroup H, then we know S. So the goal of finding S is really equivalent to, to learning the subgroup H. If the, the sense of learning the subgroup H that we mean is you know, learning a generating set for H, right? Because S, in this case, does generate H itself. Now let's talk about Simon's problem. For a Simon's problem, we work over the group Z2 to the N. The operation is bitwise addition, modulo 2. The identity element is just uh, 0 to the N. Um, and each element is its own inverse, right? For any x in z2 to the n, x plus x is equal to the all zero uh, element, okay? So in Simon's problem, the subgroup turns out to be just the set of zero to the n and s. Okay, so you see that this is a subgroup, it's closed, it contains the identity element, it's closed under addition uh, because 0 to the n plus s is s, and s plus s is 0. And it's also closed under taking inverses uh, because the inverse of s is just s itself. So this is a subgroup. And we can define the promise of Simon's problem in terms of this subgroup. Okay. So we can equivalently state the promise as saying that f is constant on cosets of h, right? Again, what is a coset of h in this case going to be? It's just going to be a set of the form, you know, x, x plus s, okay? So, um, you know, we know that f is going to take on the same uh, value on both x and x plus s. So f is constant on cosets of h, and distinct cosets have to take on distinct values under f, okay? Because of this, f of x equals f of y only if x minus y is either 0 to the n or s, okay? So you see that in this way, the promise in Simon's problem is exactly the same as in uh, the simple period finding problem, right? We have some subgroup. And the promise is that f is constant on the cosets of that subgroup, and that distinct cosets take on distinct values. Okay, and again, the goal in Simon's problem, as we originally stated, was to find s, and that is equivalent to learning the subgroup h. Again, because s generates h. Uh, so if we know s, we know h. Well, we know a generating set for h. And also, of course, if we know H, then we know S. Okay, so now we can state the hidden subgroup problem. So it's just a common generalization of these two problems. So we now we just have some arbitrary, arbitrary group G. And we have some subgroup H of G. And we're given access to Oracle access to a function F such that F is constant on left cosets of H. So now I say left cosets because you know, G is not necessarily an abelian group. And that distinct cosets take on distinct values under F. And the goal is to find a generating set for H. Okay, So this is a common generalization of both Simon's problem and the simple period finding problem. Okay, so as I said, we assume that we have Oracle access to F, and by find H, we actually mean find a generating set for H, right? So a set of elements whose closure um, 
under the group operation and taking inverses is, is H itself. And this is not really um, you know, too difficult of an ask. I mean, you might wonder if um, there might not be a good algorithm for this problem just because the generating set is very large, but it's actually the case that uh, any group uh, G of size N always has a generating set of size at most log N. So um, the size of the generating, the size of the generating set is at most uh, the log of the number of elements in the group. Okay, so we can always have a generating set of size uh, log size of h uh, for h here. Okay, so this is not really too demanding an output condition to ask that we output a generating set for h.